what happens is we ask our parents for advice, our grandparents, our aunts and uncles, or our friends who we feel are the most important people. They love us so much, but they don't know shit about what we're talking about. We are in New Orleans. Got an hour before I speak, and uh, right off the plane, got my family, my friends, and we're going to talk about utilizing your law degree in a non-traditional manner. Only one manner, <laughs> your manner. So uh, be patient, work hard, and we'll inspire some kids today. From my favorite school, Tulane. Kakarot ain't got no snow, no, nope, nope. not for vagabonds. Money in my rolled up, crew socks, pimping out the parking lot. Draw my clothes, leave the lint, start a fire. It was right, it was fine until the neighborhood got burned a lot. Still, though, his flow like who put out the pilot light. So when I graduated, like I, it was a recession, and I was one of the few people. I actually had two job offers. One was to work as an oil and gas litigator in Houston, Texas, and the other was to work in the internet. Pre uh, Professor Yiannopoulos wrote the Louisiana Treaties, the Civil Code, made like seven figures a year. True entrepreneur, right? The guy, pu West Publishing, it's now West Group. West Publishing published Black's Law Dictionary, all the Fed stuff, reporters, all that stuff. But he wrote that Louisiana Treaties and made a fortune. So he came up to me and he goes, hey, West is creating this thing uh, on the internet called West Law. I think you'd be an amazing salesperson. Well, I was like, well, you know, my goal was to what? Remember what I wanted to be? Rich. So what was my question? How much does it pay? <laughs> he goes, oh, no, Dave, I make a million dollars a year just writing this book. These guys got a ton of cash. Everybody makes six figures. You either die or you retire. Nobody ever leaves West. These are like the old book salesmen. He goes, and I think this Westlaw thing is like, legal crack. They're going to give it to the law students and they're going to get hooked to it and then everyone's going to have to pay $4.86 a minute. And he's selling me on it. I'm like, I'm sold. Okay, that's fine. And there's an expense account. I'm like, okay, that's good. So I go up to Minnesota and I get this job offer. And I go to my mom because she's my trusted advisor. I do anything for her. And I said, mom, I don't know what to do. I got offered a you know, I was on moot court, right? I'm a litigator. I could be an oil and gas lawyer, ruin the environment, make tons of money. You know, <laughs> Ollie Hawk will be pissed at me, but I'll have cool suits and a nice car. I'll be able to buy you a house. It'll be perfect. Or there's this thing called the internet, and Yippie told me that I'm gonna make a lot of money in the internet. And she literally, without blinking, said, Look, be a real lawyer, right? This internet thing, this internet thing's a fad. Wow, mom, right. Lesson number two, very valuable lesson, especially when you're in law school. And this should resonate with almost all of you that have parents that somehow make you feel a certain way, is no matter how much somebody loves you, doesn't mean they give you good advice. It's so, we all, since we've been in high school, what happens is we ask our parents for advice, or our grandparents, or our aunts and uncles, or our friends who, we feel are the most important people. They love us so much, but they don't know shit about what we're talking about. I mean, well, one of the things that, like, at least what I've, like, theorized that I, like, a good ass, one of my skills is finding X factors. Mm -hmm. Like, looking at, see, like, what little, like, what are these little trump cards that you put in there, like, everything that affects, that affects the way the world works. Yeah. So here's the problem with finding X factors. They're called independent and dependent variables. The one thing you can't control is time. So you know when people buy a stock and they're so right on the X factor, but you can't know it's gonna take six months. I'll give an example, my little, my little brother. He quits his job with his boss. They take over this company and they buy up and now they're out of money. The board brings in my brother and his boss, the CEO and president, and they say, hey, we're gonna get rid of you guys. You were wrong. You have now destroyed our company. I gave my brother advice. I said, look, tell the board, right? Tell, tell the board you'll work for free. Just pay me in stock. That's how much I believe in what we're doing. So he was a year off and he stayed the whole year. And all of a sudden, the $200 million company became a million dollar company. Then they just exited and he was right. 
so many people though, including me, you're right, but you're, you're trying to control time. And what if, what if they fired him? What are they going to apologize to him two years later when they all have all the money? Your X factor, I believe 100% that can be a skill of yours. But how can you control time? So if you believe in your X factor, then buy your stock and leave it alone. Highlight of my six day speaking tour, speaking at Tulane Law School and being able to share my experience. Uh, but it's really fun for me because I look into the eyes of the law students and I see myself totally lost, scared, wondering what the heck I'm doing and to be able to give them confidence that I didn't know what I was doing, but it really is a great uh, reminder of where and what we can do if we set our mind to it with discipline, strategy, and desire. Uh, and I just am just so fired up after I leave there and I just hope that you know, the majority of those kids take what I say about being grateful, empathetic, accountable, and effectively communicate, live inspired, enjoy the pursuit of their potential, all the great things that they learn uh, here today.